idle games are usually all about clicking a button to make progress. In theory, this seems a bit pointless until you realize that you have spent an embarrassing amount of time playing the game. This is because idle clicker games gives us a sense of constant progress which can feel very good. In this video, I want to discuss how we can create an idle game in Unity. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. For this video, I have created a very simple idle clicker game in Unity where you press a button to start a progress bar and upon it finishing, it will earn you some money. In addition to that, I have created a visualization of a soldier attacking a monster, which is here just for the sake of having easier time attracting players to try playing our game. You can download this project by going to my website and sliding down to find the project templates. It is a free download, so feel free to grab it and to check it out. Now, what makes the idle game so appealing is the constant sense of progression. And this is driven by math equations as well as by the stats that we need to know how to balance. There is a great article on gamedeveloper.com about the math for idle games that talks about all the aspects of creating a compelling experience using different equations. First thing that I want to explore is the primary concepts of the idle game. The first parameter is primary currency, which is basically the money that we earn. Second is the generator. This is the button that we click. There is a progression bar and it gives us the money and the multiplier. So any way of upgrading our item so that it can produce more money. So we need to balance those three things at least to create a compelling experience. And there are great uh, graphs that we can use to explore the problem that we have and that we need to face when creating an idle game. First of all, the Idle game requires the balance between the income and the cost of the upgrades so that we can earn enough money to keep on upgrading our items. Here the blue line depicts the cost that is driven by an exponential function and the income is linear function with some multipliers added based on the count of the items that we have already bought or upgraded. And the idea here is that we uh, mitigate the rise of the cost by adding those multipliers. The exponential cost is great at first, but at later stages the cost rises so fast that we have no chance of catching up with it. This would mean that at later stages our game would simply become boring. A better approach would be to use a linear function for the cost and the logarithmic function for the generator, increasing the value using a bonus multiplier based on the count of the items or the upgrades that we have given it. Well, we still have the issue where the income grows less rapidly with the count, so that at some point we still have this gap between the cost of the upgrade and the income that the generator provides. To mitigate this, we can have multiple generators, so multiple items that we can unlock by paying some money upfront that can generate more money overall when they are working together. And here is the income from multiple generators, this way we can diminish the difference between the cost of upgrade of single generator because we can now gather the generated money from multiple income sources to upgrade a single generator. In my implementation I have used the data from the article and as you can see the first button earns us very little money but what we can do with this money is upgrade it to make it earn more and at some point if we earn enough money we're going to be able to unlock the second generator which will in turn help us to earn even more money because now we can use two generators and earn money much faster. Now as you can see the second generator has a longer delay but what we can do in addition to uh, have those upgrades we can have managers or automation for our generators. So if we earn enough money, we can purchase the automation, which I call managers or squad leaders. It will allow us to automatically click on this button to generate the income for us, which again gives us a sense of progression. Even if we do not do anything in our game, we are still gaining something, some additional money to spend on other things, on other upgrades of the other generators. And as you can see, we can now purchase the third generator which again gives us the sense of progression. Now, in terms of the implementation, 
The project is structured in a way that we have a UI part, which is the way for the player to interact with our game. I have created this visual part, which is kind of separate from the, our idle game concept, because our idle game could run without the visualization part. And the most important part is in the scripts, and this is the game rules script. Now the game rules script uses the game data to store the status of our game and uses the events to communicate with other scripts in our project, so with the UI and with the visual side of the project. Now I have separated the data into the game data script and here we, have, we are storing the money as the double tab so we can store really large values, but this solution isn't perfect and I will explain why later. The last part is the visual side, so the soldier, the enemy and some visualizations of visual effects and sound effects representing what happens when I click on our button. And as I have mentioned, our game would work perfectly fine without this part. Still, I believe that even a simple visualization will help us bring more players to try our game because even if our game is great, if no one plays it, then no one will ever know about our game and no one will ever recommend it to others for them to try it out. In terms of the code design, the main part of the game is the game manager that connects the game UI, so the buttons, the UI, with the game rules, so our script that drives our idle clicker, and it can also connect visual controllers, so the enemies that perform the visual aspect of the game, and this is all connected using the events that are sent and the game manager connects the game rules and the events that it sends with the events of the game UI. This way, if we want to add a save system, we can easily do that through the game manager because the game manager can access the game rules and the game rules has access to this game data that is what we want to save if we want to exit the game. If we open the game manager script, it relies on being able to access all of those different components so the game UI, the game rules and even it stores the game data here so that we can use it in the save system if we want to save our data we can get the game data and get the save data from it directly. Now in terms of connecting those events in the awake I have those three methods and this connects for example the game rules to the UI so here we connect it in such a way that if we activate an item, the UI knows about it and shows it as a feedback to the player. But also I'm connecting the events from the game rules to the visual controller. So we get the updates about the soldiers and the enemies and what happens to those and to make them play the animations that they should. Now again, the visual controller uses the data that is sent by the game rules so you can see that the action event is sending the int, so the index and the game data so that the visual controller can update itself based on this data. So we go to the definition and here we set soldier count based on the index and based on the game data item count. This is how we are going to update the visuals as well as the uh, UI based on the game data that we pass to those methods. This architecture allows us to keep the code modular and allow us to easily update, for example, the visuals for something entirely different while keeping the main logic for the idle game intact without affecting it. So in practice, what it means is that if I click a button, we will see that a method called handle start item progress was called and this method exists in the game rules. So the UI sent a message to the game rules script that something has happened and this game rules has to now respond. It calls on perform action method, which in turn is connected to the visual controller so that we know when the soldier should start playing its own animation. It also calls on the start work on item uh, event and this in turn is connected to the game UI so that the UI knows when to start the progress bar. And this is how we play the animation on the soldier and run the progress bar and send the events back and forth between the UI, the visual controller and the game rules script that works underneath the whole visual experience so that the players can click those buttons and the logic works as intended. I am also using in the project in the game manager scriptable objects. I am providing the item data in terms of the uh, way to balance our game. We can easily select the scriptable object and tweak the base income cost and factor 
and the, the delay uh, so that we can easily modify how our game runs one problem with the system is that the uh, characters in the visualization setup have those animations and when we press our animation, we're going to see that the soldier throw animation is being played while the progression bar in the UI plays. The progression bar is driven by those uh, scriptable objects and the delay set here, but the animation cannot really be set randomly. To look good, it needs to play in a certain way, so we can't really make it much longer or much shorter because the throw using the grenade would look strange. So while I'm mentioning that the visual side is disconnected from the idle game, the animations needs to be tweaked in a way that when we press our button, the progress bar matches the animation speed and how it plays its own thing in the visualization side of our game. Now interesting thing about the grenade throw is that there is an additional path using simple implementation of splines where we have this first point, uh, the middle point and the second point. And we can control, if we move this middle point, we can control how the path of the grenade that it will, it will uh, travel towards the enemy. And this is how, when I press the button, the grenade travels on this path to hit the enemy. You can check out the spline script in the project that I have provided to learn how it all works and how it calculates and how we are using gizmos to draw those points so that you can tweak them in the scene view. Another thing that is kind of tricky is storing the money value. As I have mentioned, I'm using the double type that can store a lot of data, but this is not a perfect way to store the money values since it can grow to very large numbers. Luckily, there is this great article dealing with huge numbers in idle games that I will link that tells how to create a custom structure to store this money value in a way that we can store a very large numbers and perform on them operations very efficiently. Feel free to use my project template to create your own idle games in Unity. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.